What's up guys, got another case coming at you. This is actually a follow-up from a case I did about three months ago uh, for a 25-year-old male rugby player who dislocated his shoulder on the field. It was an impact injury, very acute injury. Now, fast forward three months later, he came in for a reassessment. So we checked a questionnaire called the Quick Dash, the disability of the, sh of the arm, shoulder, and hand. And he initially had scored at a 43 three months ago, a 43 out of 100, meaning he rated himself at 43% disabled. And he rescored at a two. 2% disabled, so that's obviously an improvement. Range of motion, normalized in all planes. Flexion, internal rotation, external rotation, all normal compared to the right side and pain-free, which was great. He had actually snatched in the last two weeks uh, 70, 74 kilos, which was body weight. Clean and jerked up to 90 kilos. That was all in the last two weeks, and that's actually when he had first started getting back to the snatch and the jerk. So we kind of had a conversation that he maybe needs to slow his roll a little bit on the progression. It was great that he got through that session and he was able to work up to those relatively heavy singles. But since he had not really prepared himself up to that point, we're gonna progress the, uh, the load increase a little bit more conservatively. We tested a sideline external rotation test, just the basic ER here with a two and a half up and a, and a five kilo plate. And we went to failure on multiple sets and the left side was consistently 10% weaker than the right. And what I mean by 10% weaker is that he, was, he failed about 10% less reps than on the right, or he was able to complete about 10% less reps on the left before failure compared to the right side. We then went to a seated external rotation drill where essentially his back is against the wall, he's holding a dumbbell, and he's going in about a three up, three down tempo, but the cue is the wall to shoulder blade. He had mentioned to me during some of his snatches and some of his jerks that his shoulder just kind of felt like it was disconnected, like he couldn't make that, that connection with his brain body and, and stabilize that shoulder joint. So the wall is kind of that cue to lock the shoulder blade in position as he's moving through the shoulder joint. So we moved through that, and then we went through a ton of barbell variations. So I, I looked at his overhead position in the snatch grip, and I noticed that he had a bar tilt to the right side and it's hard to know if that was always there and that's just kind of his thing but it looked to me like his body was almost stacking the bar over his left shoulder in a way to avoid actually pushing with that left arm into the bar so we worked a ton of snatch grip push press overhead squats snatch balance all with the empty bar all with the cue of just actively pushing into the bar especially with that right arm and the bar tilt actually leveled out he reported that the squat felt easier to get into because everything was just sitting equally into both sides and so I thought that was really good. We then took the bar off of his back and put it in the high hang and he started to perform dip snatches where it's just a dip into the power position and then a punching into the overhead position and with the idea of just recreating the same positions over and over and over. And then we went to snatches from the floor. So we went light, 30 to 40 kilos and again, trying to recreate the same overhead position as we had with the empty bar. And that goes into our home exercise program where essentially he's gonna do the snatch and the jerk of some form one to two times a week each, but he's gonna use technique and position as his threshold, meaning he's only gonna go as heavy as he can control the positions, not as heavy as he can simply move from point A to point B. And so we made sure to make that distinction. Um, and then within that, we're gonna add a day of empty bar work. So basically going through the exact same progression that I just outlined, just as an extra day by itself just a, a, a touch point, because you know, the barbell can be great rehab. You know, it's a lot more load than a, a pink TheraBand, so we can't forget about empty bar work. And then twice a week, dumbbell overhead pressing and assisted pull-ups, so he's a strong guy, so we'll load him up with the bands for a little bit of help on the pull-ups, but he won't need that for very long. So he'll, do, he'll roll through those a couple times a week, and then he'll do that seated extra rotation drill you know, four or five times a week. It's not gonna accrue a, a ton of fatigue, and he can hit that pretty frequently. So if you guys have any questions about these cases or any comments, feel free to email me, info at clinicalathlete.com. We also post these cases and a whole lot more resources like them on the Clinical Athlete Forum. So that can be found at clinicalathlete.com and you can find your nearest clinical athlete provider on that same website. Thanks guys.